The year is 2024. Mythic Plus is on the brink of extinction. The last Dratnos route was published months ago, and the only healer left in Group Finder is JB. But at age 57, his great-grandchildren are urging him to quit WoW. How did things get so bad? What happened in Mythic Plus that led us to this moment? As it turns out, there was a massive coordinated disinformation campaign that had started years ago. You see, there was a player named Illidan God X who would spam LFG every day. Let's just say he was a bit of a toxic player. His kicks? Non-existent. His defensives? Not even bound. To make matters worse, he was chat banned and would only communicate through his battle pet named One Heal. Illidan God X was burdened by his failures and set out to destroy Mythic Plus for good. To do this, he went to the forums posting disinformation. He flooded YouTube comments with lies, but he didn't stop there. He even created his own subreddit called Competitive Wow. Over time, Illidan God X controlled an ideological empire, infecting players with his own lies. And now, his maniacal plan is almost complete. But with the power of the Bronze Dragonflight, we can save the future of Mythic Plus. We've obtained Illidan God X's notebook and the top lies he spread. Today, we will teach you the truth. Illidan God X only played Havoc Demon Hunter and would constantly die to melee mechanics. Because of this, the first myth he told was that melee is the hardest role. Those casters, they have it easy. But was he right? No! Okay, we know that melee can feel overwhelming and it's definitely not an easy role. You spend every run needing to dodge AoE and frontals, all while spamming globals and landing kicks. If you've ever played melee, you know how exhausting this feels. But it doesn't mean that ranged is suddenly a walk in the park. Casters have a bunch of responsibilities too, and a lot of them overlap with melee. Ranged obviously need to kick and CC too, and on some fights, ranged have unique jobs of their own, like baiting boss mechanics. Players from both DPS roles like to think their job is more prestigious, but at the end of the day, that's not the right way to think about it. Even if one DPS role is actually easier, it means having the freedom to take on more responsibilities for the group, like assigning stops or calling for cooldowns. So don't be distracted by this conversation over whether ranged or melee is harder. But guys, no matter which role you're trying to push Mythic Plus keys on this season, we're proud to announce that we've been developing brand new Mythic Plus guides for Season 3. We've been working with the highest rated players from Echo and Method to develop courses in one convenient location that teach you the advanced mechanics you can learn quickly that actually increase your IO score. Our guides teach you information you won't find anywhere else, like how to make your interrupts more effective, or how to take advantage of your entire toolkit to survive one-shot mechanics the right way. We even provide tests to help you fill any gaps in your knowledge and show you some of the most common damage mistakes that players just like you are making. With the help of MDI champions like Miris, you will learn everything that most players overlook. All this and more is contained in an expanding library of premium courses that are guaranteed to help you achieve your goals this season. In fact, we even promise that you will gain at least 500 rating while using our website, and if you don't, then you shouldn't pay. So visit the link below to get started with an exclusive discount offer. To add to the confusion, Illidan God X wanted healers to feel extra miserable. He spent so much time dying to avoidable mechanics, and in his mind, it must be a healer problem. Because of this, he spread another lie that healers are just accessories. The real work is being done by tanks and DPS. Honestly, unless you've been living under a rock, there's a pretty big problem right now. Nobody wants to heal. Which makes total sense when people like Illidan God X are always blaming them for everything. One reason why some people think healing is fake is because they're tunnel visioning details. They see tanks at the top of the healing meters and assume their healer must be AFK. The other reason is that spot healing has been an issue for healers all expansion, making it much more difficult to recover health bars in a pinch, and giving DPS the idea that their healer is just being lazy. It takes two seconds to realize this is completely backwards. These days, healing is a very involved role. If you are not healing, you are doing something else like CC, damage, or playing mechanics. In emergencies, healers can even tank, which means you are truly capable of playing almost any role and needing to adapt on the fly. Are there times when you don't have to heal much? Of course, you only need as much healing as it takes to stay alive. There is some truth that healing isn't always needed, but there are also times where DPS are less involved too. This streak goes both ways. Is healing a fake role? Definitely not. To complete his hat trick of misinformation, Building God X spread yet another lie. Tanks need to call everything. 
Alright, this one is a bit tricky and might be deeply rooted within WoW culture, where even in the recent past, groups were formed around tanks who over time have become more powerful with massive impact over the success of the run. With that said, there are good reasons to believe that tanks need to be the shot callers. They're generally the ones controlling the pace of the runs, announcing what they are pulling, and sometimes even assigning kicks. For the rest of the group, having the tank take the lead means having less brain globals and the ability to spend more time focusing on damage or healing. But if you ask many MDI or TGP teams, the leadership role is often in the hands of a DPS. If we circle back to the melee versus range difficulty argument, remember that casters can take on extra responsibilities because on paper they have less mechanics to deal with, and as a ranged player, most of the time you have a much clearer view of what's going on in the dungeon. If Mythic Plus is like chess, then your tank is like the king. If they become distracted by needing to call everything, it would be game over. So are tanks the only ones who should shot call? Definitely not. The next lie spread by our Demon Hunter outcast was that damage is the only thing that matters for timing keys. Everything else is just a waste of time. Most players should know that this is completely wrong, but there is still a massive misunderstanding of what the damage role plays in Mythic Plus. It's true that doing big damage is good, but this season we're seeing the rise of specs like BM Hunter and Assassination Rogue for the singular reason that they can do some impressive numbers. What's less obvious is how high level groups manage to consistently deal more damage, because the real backbone of any successful run is not just DPS, it's stability. Damage is important, but you don't do any DPS while your character is dead on the ground. This is why proactive defensive play and efficient mob control are both vital for timing keys. In order to actually stay alive and make the group feel stable, you can't have people randomly falling to avoidable mistakes. One huge problem with climbing in Mythic Plus is that lower level keys aren't punishing enough. Players don't get execution tested hard enough because in some cases, failing a mechanic or missing a kick isn't really that punishing. This then gives rise to the idea that you can simply brute force your way through a run by slamming the damage meters. In reality, what actually times keys is not dying. Playing clean and having a good plan is more important than doing 100% optimal DPS. So in order to make your damage count, it needs to be combined with control and defensive play to give your group a feeling of stability. In his quest to massively disrupt Mythic Plus, Illidan God X tapped into WoW Esports. He took to the forums, telling everyone that if you want to increase IO, all you need to do was copy everything you see in tournaments. Because that totally makes sense, right? The best players in the world getting together for a month to practice giant pulls for hours every day doesn't mean everyone can or should be doing this in pugs. Just like your older cousin at Thanksgiving, the MDI baits people into doing very experimental stuff or causing them to have a distorted view on class balance. The MDI is meant to be a spectacle, to push the limits of what is possible in an environment that has been completely labbed out by the best players in the world. Those giant pulls are meant to be completely unrealistic for most players, especially since they are designed around very specific off-meta comps. As far as the TGP is concerned, look, we know last season was weird, and it just so happened that the absolute best comp in the game was popular in the TGP. And for everyone's well-being, we should probably forget Dragonflight Season 2 ever happened. While the TGP paints a more realistic picture of the meta and the actual game, it's still a spectacle, and players find clever ways to use strategies that don't really translate well to everyday play. Even though tournaments are fun and competitive, it's a completely unrealistic metagame for 99.9% .9 of the player base. Maybe tournaments don't define the meta, but do you know what does? Tier lists. Ilden God X knew that if he got people addicted to tier lists, he could end Mythic Plus for good. He spread the message far and wide that you can only play meta comps. Ha! <laughs> if you aren't S tier, why are you even playing the game? To have fun on a class we main! Again, we need to forget Season 2 ever happened. But what we shouldn't forget is that every season there are players who manage to push really high ratings as off meta comps. Did groups need augmentation evokers to push the highest keys last season? Yes. But were augmentation evokers needed to push plus 20, plus 25, or maybe even up to plus 30? Probably not. This mentality that a cutting edge playstyle is needed for all forms of content is one of the main reasons why LFG can feel so toxic. Because group leaders make the decision in advance to crowd out the majority of the player base when making groups. Of course, it's helpful to have a group comp that works, but understanding what works and what doesn't requires some nuance that isn't always obvious by looking at a tier list. And with many classes being homogenized to some degree, multiple roles can be played by multiple specs just fine. So while it might be practical to play a good comp, it's not always needed. If anything, be inspired by people who one trick and manage to adapt season after season. Fine, okay. Maybe you didn't need the best comps of all time, 
But do you know what you do need? Complicated routes with multiple obscure skips and huge risky pulls, just like you see on Twitch. People think the best way to time a dungeon is just to press the W key and constantly move forward at the fastest pace possible doing massive pulls. And we understand the pressure, there is a timer you are fighting. But remember what we said earlier, stability is more important than damage and is more efficient than doing risky pulls. Doing smart, conservative, and efficient pulls is almost always better than trying to be flashy and complicated. Higher rated groups who are communicating with each other on Discord can be a bit more risky because everything is being communicated. Every kick, stop, defensive, and bloodlust is a conscious and coordinated effort. But in pugs, you obviously don't have the ability to coordinate so precisely. Instead, for groups without communication, it's best to just take things a bit slower to make sure you don't get overwhelmed by too many cast bars and mechanics. Instead of spreading all of these lies, Illidan God X should have looked to the demon within. Maybe it wasn't a tier list causing him to miss kicks, and maybe his healer did use that one heal while he ignored his defensive. Maybe there was more to life than just doing big dick damage after all, he thought. But where should he go to learn this divine knowledge? He should have went to skillcat.com to take advantage of our rating gain guarantee. Look, we know that there is a lot of conflicting information out there, which is why at Skillcapped we only work with the best players in the game to make our guides. We're talking about the most dedicated and highest rated players from guilds like Echo and Method, who teach you some of the tricks needed to push higher keys, like easy and simple tweaks to your gameplay which can result in huge damage increases. Not only that, but also important class knowledge you need to know in order to make the most of your entire toolkit, ensuring you land more CC and die less, instantly making you feel more confident in your own gameplay. With over a half million lifetime users, a money back guarantee, and a growing Discord community, what are you waiting for? Join Skillcapped risk free using the discount link below. Alright, guys, hopefully you weren't tricked into believing any of these myths, but let us know what you think in the comments below. As always, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.